Function Notation In this video, we will talk about Function Notation. In a way, we are trying to represent our functions in some standard form. We are trying to provide a name and a symbol. And its function notation is also about finding value of the function. And we will also see how function notation provides flexibility in dealing with multiple equations. As you are very clear about equations, let's start with equations and then go to function notation. Uh, let me take example of algebraic equations like y equals to x square minus 1 and you have also seen many equations everywhere you write y equals to something and let me write y equals to 2x plus 1. As you know here x is the input independent variable and for each value of x we get a specific value of y since for each value of x you get a unique output this also represents a function now when it represents a function we can use function notation to write this equation and see how simple it is we just replace y with fx so we can call this particular equation with a function f and since the independent variable is x we will write this as f of x equals to 2x plus 1. Remember, the name of the function we are giving it as f. This is an argument, the input variable x and f of x gives us the output value which is same as y in this equation. Okay, Don't confuse it with any multiplication. It is not f times x. It is f of x. At times you can also see it as value of, because since it gives you value of the function, we can say f at x. It's like value of function at x. So it is not multiplication or it is not times, it is just f of x and that's how the symbol is. Well, normally if there is one function, we give f for function as the default value but we are not restricted to f you could name it anything a b c d whatever normally the second equation if we consider we can give it a name let's say g now again the argument is x so we can call this as g of x equals to x square minus 1 you can appreciate the beauty of function notation here earlier in a system if we have two equations like this y equals to x square minus 1 and y equals 2x plus 1 at times you can get confused as which equation we are talking about giving it a name gives it an identity and makes things much better and clear so working in multiple equations function notation is extremely helpful now let's see let's explore this further what is this g of x g of x is value of the function for some all, all independent values of x in the domain of x. Let's consider for the time being a restricted domain restricted domain of x as let's say 1, 2 and 3. Restricted, we restricted it. X could be any real number. This equation is valid for all real numbers. But for our example's sake, we can restrict this domain to any values. Let's say we restrict it to integers 1, 2, and 3. And same restriction, let's apply to this. And then let's try to find some values. What is g of 1? g of 1 is 1 square minus 1, 0. What is g of 2? g of 2 is 2 square minus 1, 4 minus 1, 3. How about g of 3? g of 3 will be 3 square minus 1, 9 minus 1, 8. 
to evaluate or to find the value of a function for a given value of x, the thing which you have to do is just substitute x as this number. So here for 1, g1, 1 square minus 1, 0. Same as the case here. If you want to find what is f of 2, in that case, just plug in 2 here. f of 2 is 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 1, 5. Similarly, you can find different values. Let's calculate f of 3, which is 7, and f of 1, which is 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3. So as you can see that the in function notation g of x actually represents the value of function for a given input. Now g of x, here what is x? x is the input independent variable. We also call it an argument. And what is G? G is name of function. And what is G of X? What is this thing? G of X. This is G of X. What is G of X? It is value of function G at x. It is value of function g at x. The number 8, the number 3 and number 0 in this case. The value of function. So g of function we can say like this. For a value 1, when the input was 1, then the output was g1 which is equal to 0. When it was 2, the output was g2, which was equal to 3. When the input was 3, the output was g3, the value was 8. So these are, this form, the set of g's forms the range for restricted domain of 1, 2 and 3. So, in function notation, g of x is actually the value of function at that particular number or a point. As you have seen above, in these algebraic equations, to write them in the form of function notation, you basically change y to fx or gx for that matter it could be anything you can write this px or anything right the name of the function is sometimes very important you can write these names normally in the case of uh, depending on let's say profit function so if it is profit it's good to use letter p pn may be profit of number of items let's say height of a function let's say height let's say the height of a ball when it is kicked is shown like this. Here the independent variable is t and the dependent variable is height. Height with respect to time. The function is ht. So height of the function could be given as ht. Similarly you can have earnings. Earnings could be something like this whatever. So if it is earnings, earnings could be sales dependent on sales so let's say earnings dependent on sales you could sometimes use capital letters or small lower case lower case is preferred most of the time amount amount you can use a to number of pieces n like this so any function name can be defined here this is the name of the function the letter alphabetical letter A, B, C, D or whatever and this is the argument. Argument necessarily can be, is not always X, could be anything which is relevant independent variable. So let's get back to function notation variable. 
look at it again. Function notation. Normally, we represent this as f of x. We call this as f of x or f at x. Remember, there is no multiplication here, nor is it f times x. And fx, f of x represents value of dependent variable output that is right for a given independent variable. Normally we use x as input, right? So that, that is how you should see fx as. And as you have seen, in most equations, you can replace y with fx. Why am I saying most equations? Can you replace all the equations with fx, the value of y? No, you can't. Only if the equation is a function. Equation should be a function. Then you can replace it with f of x in the function notation. Otherwise, you can't. Now, let's look into it like this. Is it just a replacement of y with fx? No, you must have realized by now it gives us flexibility and becomes very versatile. We can use multiple equations giving it different names and refer to them with function notation. It becomes very simple. Earlier, you will remember, when we developed the concept of function, we talked about relations. Relations have name. For example, sisters, brothers, mothers. But relations could be complicated. In-laws of my sister. So it is kind of relation of a relation. With using function notation, we can do the same thing. We can have function of a function. So that's the beauty and that's how it becomes more versatile. In the next video, we will see how to evaluate function of a function. Let me take few more examples here. Uh, let's say we have equation y equals to x square minus 2x. Here, this is a function since for every value of x, we will have a unique value of y. Let us call this function as hx. So hx equals to x square minus 2x. Now, for different values of x, we can always calculate hx. For example, h of 1 will be 1 square minus 2. 1 square minus 2 times 1, which is 1 minus 2 minus 1. You can also find h at any particular value. For example, I can have h a equals to replace x with a, a square minus 2x. Similarly, what will be h of 2a? h of 2a will be replace x with 2a. So 2a square minus 2 times 2a, which is 4a square minus 4a. So try doing something like this. Determine what is h of 2a minus 1. Basically, you need to replace x with 2a minus 1 and then evaluate the general function. You can also calculate h of a plus 1 minus h of a minus 1 whole square. Basically, plug in a plus 1 first and then a minus 1. Find the difference and square it. So that way it gives us more flexibility to work with equations. So we see here function notation in case of algebraic equation is simple replacement of y to fx provided equation represents a function. 
If an equation doesn't rep represent a function, we cannot use this notation. For example, x square plus y square equals to 10. It represents a circle with a radius of square root 10. Here, this is not a function. As it fails, vertical line test. So in this particular case, we cannot replace y with fx. Well, function is not restricted to just these equations. Functions we can use to represent graphs. Very difficult to sometimes find equation of each and every graph. But well, if we know the variable and some measurements have been done and we find that, let's say, this is a function g of a time, then gt is the value for each instance of time. So we can use the function notation like this. Functions can be used in many applications as combination, you know, like profit function. So profit function, let's say on items sold, number of items sold, could be revenue on the number of items sold minus cost. So functions can be used in many applications and this notation helps us to understand the solution or approach to solve a problem better. I hope you appreciate it and next time we will discuss more applications to determine the value of function using function notation and then we will also consider cases of function of function. Thank you.